Okay, so let's take a look at this question here, number two in unit seven, um, lesson two, and where we're asked to find an expression for the mean and the standard deviation um, for a set of values. But in this case, the values themselves are algebraic expressions. So is there any difference in what we have to do with this question? Okay, and the answer is no. We just have to take through, work out the steps fully and just see what, um, where the math takes us here. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is how do we do the mean? Okay, so we know the mean, symbol for mean is mu, and we know that it is the sum of the elements in our set. Okay, so we have a total of seven elements here in the set divided by the number of elements, okay, which was equal to the value of seven. So how would we write the sum of our elements? Well, we just simply start putting them down um, as expressions, okay, and just start adding them up. So it's a little bit long, but we have to go 3x minus 2y plus 3x minus 3y, okay, and so on for each set in the elements until we get to the very end, which is going to be 3x minus 3y, okay? So we will have to go through each one of those and then divide it by the number of elements, which is in this case is 7. All right, now the interesting thing is, so instead of writing them all down, we can kind of just look at the list that's given above there. So what we need to do is add up all the x values. So there's three x appears in each term and there's seven of them. So that's gonna give us 21 x. And then we just go and add the y's up and see what we get with that. So we have negative two plus negative three, which is negative five, plus seven, which is going to take us back down to plus two. Um, minus one, minus two, plus four, minus three. And when we add all those terms up, you will see that it ends up to be zero y and divided by seven. So the, the zero y term will just go away. So this is simply going to be 21 x over seven, okay, or three x. So the entire average of that set of algebraic expressions just turns out to be three times the number of x. The value of y doesn't even enter into it. Okay, and then for the standard deviation, okay, this one's a little bit more complicated. So we are looking to find sigma here. Now the standard deviation is equal to the square root, okay, and the formula is a little bit complicated. It's the sum of each individual element. So we're gonna say that's the variable x minus the mean of the set, all squared divided by, um, the number of elements n in this case, which is equal to seven. So how does this look when we start to write it down? So again, we just start working out the math and see where this takes us. So um, we need to write out the sum of each of those elements. So the first term here is going to be three X minus two Y. That's our first element. And then we subtract the mean from that, which is three X. And then we square that. Okay, and then our second term is going to be 3x um, minus 3y. That's the next term in our set, and then we subtract 3x from that and take the square of that, and then so on, and we keep going until we run out of um, terms in our set, and then we end up dividing that by seven. Okay, and then so just remember we're carrying the square root sign down to it. So how do we look at simplifying this term? Well, the interesting thing we see here is that the three X's actually cancel each other. So this three X, let's change color here, is subtracted from this three X. And this three X subtracts this three X. So this leads us to a little bit of a simplification for this problem. All we're actually doing is squaring the, the Y term in each case. So this is gonna end up being negative two Y squared plus negative three Y squared plus, and then we'll grab the next term, um, which is um, seven Y, okay, squared and so on until we run out of terms again, and we're dividing all that by seven. And again, carrying the square root sign down. So if we keep going, um, and we look at what our information is, we'll find out that we would just end up squaring each of those numbers and adding them up. And that will actually give us a total of 92Y squared all over seven, which is an expression that can calculate our standard deviation. Okay, now if we're gonna simplify this, um, we can split this up. So our rules for the radicals say, 
we can go the square root of 92 over 7 times the square root of y squared, um, which is equal to this number in radical form times the value of y. So our standard deviation does not even depend on the variable x, it only depends on the variable y times a coefficient of the square root of 92 by 7. Okay, so this is a quick way to analyze how this question works out. Um, it, you just have to work out what the math expression is and then realize that a whole bunch of terms end up cancelling inside and all you end up doing is just squaring the y term. Um, and really all you have to do is square the coefficient and then add them up and that should give us um, the value that you see there. Okay.